what is house poor and how can you avoid being house poor? Um, this is one of my favorite topics that I like to educate my clients on and friends as well. So what is being house poor? Uh, it's, and it's very, very simple in its simplest terms. Being house poor is living paycheck to paycheck to pay for your house. Same thing when you're when you buy an expensive car and you're you know you're renting in and you have a car that's almost as expensive as your rent. It's that same concept, right? Yes, you can afford it, but can you save? Can you put money away for retirement? Can you make other investments? Are you able to enjoy life? Are you able to go on small little trips, vacations, whatever you want to call them? So in its simplest form, this is what being house poor is. So when you're looking to buy a house, your loan officer will tell you, this is your maximum purchase price, right? Uh, and it's based off of the maximum payment. So the payment is directly tied into the uh, house value, right? So you can afford $2,000, $2,000 equals to $400,000 home, whatever that is, right? That's the formula. That's how it's calculated. Let's just say you make $4,000 a month and that's going to be half of your paycheck right there off the bat. This is not including taxes. This is not including anything else that you might have to pay for. So, cause we qualify you on your, bef on your before tax income. So that is they qualify you off of your max debt to income ratio, right? So they qualify you off of what you can afford to the max. They'll never say, hey, this is, or at least the good ones will, but a lot of them won't because it's a higher purchase price, more commission, more money. Let's not even go there. But so just because you qualify for the maximum amount or your maximum debt to income ratio, which is typically anywhere from 45 all the way up to 55% debt to income ratio, depending on the specific program that you are in, doesn't mean you should go there. And how can you avoid being house poor? Well, there are several ways that you can avoid. The quickest and the easiest one is, okay, you can afford on paper, right? You can afford $2,000, but you don't want to pay $2,000, right? So you're going to tell your loan officer, Hey, loan officer, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad that I'm able to be pre-approved for $2,000, but that's really at my high end. That's really at the maximum amount. You drop that down. I would say even 30 to 25% debt to income ratio, depending on your situation, of course, and depending on your plan. But let's say, Hey, uh, loan officer, could you see how much I can afford if my mortgage payment was $1,200? See what that correlates to a purchase price. So let's say you go from 400,000, now you're all the way down to 250, right? So now you know, okay, this is my starter home. This is what, this is the game plan. This is how I'm gonna avoid being house poor. I'm going to drop my purchase price. I'm gonna drop my payment so that I can still save. I can still live. Um, I can still uh, put away for retirement, uh, for the emergency fund, whatever your uh, goal is or your plan is, but you drop it down to 1200, right? So that's $800 gap. So now you aren't at your maximum, but you're, you're at a comfortable place where, Hey, I could pay 1200 bucks. That's how you avoid being house poor. You come up with a plan. All right, loan officer, I'm going to buy this, uh, $1,200 mortgage payment. And in a year, right? You come up with your situation and you come up with your goal in a year, I'm going to rent this house out. What will I rent this house out for? What do you think? So you speak with your loan officer and you speak with your real estate agent. What are the rents projected to be in this specific neighborhood in a year or two years from now? So let's say it's 1500, 1600, right? So now you're in the positive, hopefully, where now you'll be making an additional three to $400 um, a month on this house once you rent it out. So now you have that where you can now increase your purchase price because you have that additional income coming in from this property. Um, and now you can move up a little bit and you continue doing this, but you aren't strapped and you aren't at the maximum debt to income ratio. So there, there are ways around how to avoid being house poor. Another option is, and this is what I wish uh, I would have done. And this is what I think I'm going to do with um, my uh, 17 year old is once they're in college, have buy them a house, or, or buy yourself a house or, you know, whatever your plan is, buy yourself a house and rent out the rooms. If you're okay with other people living in your house, or if you're okay with uh, sticking it out until, you know, you're able to fully rent that house out a year later, this is how you avoid being house poor. So let's say you do want to buy 
that mortgage uh, payment that's at two thousand dollars, right? But you have a buddy of yours that's going to give you six hundred dollars for one room, and then you have another buddy that's going to give you four hundred dollars for another room, right? So that in itself is a thousand dollars. So now you're only paying a thousand dollars plus you're still able to save and put away for your next investment or for the rainy day fund. This is how you can avoid um, being house poor. And this is what I strongly recommend, right? So I'll give you an example. I have a buddy of mine who owns 10 properties and he rents, every, he started off with one property himself, lived in it for a year, but when he bought it, he rented out every single room in the house except uh, his. And he didn't even live in the master because he decided that he can get more money for the master if he just takes a smaller room. So he toughed it out for a year and he continues to do that actually for five more years. Now he has, I think he has a total of 12 investment properties because he, he continued to do it, continued to do it. And he rents out every single room. Of course, this is just a strategy that I'm sharing with you. This is just something that's worked for him. And this is something that can work for you. Of course, speak with a professional about it in your local market to see if it makes sense. But he gets anywhere from five to $800 a room. Um, and of course, it covers his, his mortgage. But that's how you can also avoid being house poor. You have somebody else move in with you and help you cover the mortgage, um, either half of it or charge them a room, depending on your, your arrangement or your specific setup. This can make 100% sense for you. And this is how you really avoid being um, house poor. So again, being house poor is that you are living your life to just make your mortgage payment. Of course, we're not taking into account the appreciation and the tax savings and all that good stuff uh, that comes with being a homeowner. We are just talking about you living essentially paycheck to paycheck to pay for your mortgage and a place to live. So guys, I hope you found value in this episode. And if you want to hear more strategies that some of my clients, some of my friends, some real estate partners are doing, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to hop on a quick call and just go over these strategies and really just give you an action plan. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. If you found value, share with a family and friend. Thank you so much.